This Crusader build flips the game on its head and uses its belt skill, Remote Mine, as its main spammable attack. There are a ton of benefits to doing this that we'll get into later, but the biggest one is the sheer amount of base damage that this Remote Mine deals, that we scale with huge damage boosters like Critical Strikes and Enraged Tokens. This build melts through elites like butter even in plus 10s, and it can survive really really well with a ton of leech, reduction, and shields. The Gravgun is a really simple ranged weapon that supports the real star remote mine very very well. This is mostly because it scales the same physical damage, but also because the second ability Gravity Implosion puts a persistent damaging area on the ground for 5 seconds, giving us more than enough time to focus solely on laying and exploding landmines or dodging attacks. Gravity Implosion is the main ability that we use on this Grav Gun. The persistent area effect rapidly hits, which is great for applying vulnerabilities and stacking enraged tokens really fast. An 11 second cooldown might look scary, but because it's a persistent area damaging effect, every single tick will reduce the cooldown from eradicative protocols in the middle of the AoE passive. We'll talk more about that later, but you should be able to use this skill on average every 3 to 6 seconds as long as you're aiming it well. The other three skills on this grav gun are not useless at all, they're actually pretty good for single target, but they eat up too much heat and enrage tokens that we'd rather keep for the landmine damage, so we don't really use the other three skills very often. Single shot simply hits the enemy with one projectile. The skill has decent damage, it pierces armor, and it can be even used alongside your landmine explosions if you hold down the two buttons at the same time. Once again, it eats enraged tokens very fast, which is a problem. Temporal Anomaly is another single projectile, except this one has a longer cooldown, pierces enemies and deals more damage, and then applies a slower stun depending on the enemy suppression. I don't use this very often. The piercing is nice for large packs, and you can use it between single shots for a rapid burst of damage, but you'd usually end up with a lot more damage just from using landmines anyways, and you wouldn't use any heat. Last and certainly least is Gravity Surge, a channeled skill that deals rapid damage. It's not that this is a bad skill, this just is not the right build for it to shine. It uses up way too much heat and requires us to stand still, which is the opposite of what we want to do. I pretty much never use this skill. The actual weapon that I'm using is a normal relic with the classic, every 10th enemy explodes for 100% of their HP, which lets us just blow up screens of enemies without really having to think. You don't necessarily even need a high level weapon with many enchants. This build could be made with a terrible, terrible weapon because the bulk of our damage actually comes from the belt skill. For enchantments, I try to get critical hit chance and strength and then damage to AoE skills, which are three really good ways to scale both our grav gun damage and our remote mine damage. I'm pretty sure the best secondary enchant for this would be a lower cooldown on gravity implosion so we can just use it a lot more often. It might look weird to see me include the belt item in the weapons section, but that's because we have one perk that turns our landmine belt equipment into a spammable attack at almost no cost. That perk is Armory of Zeal, that makes grenades and mine skills cost 20 focus instead of charges, and then supply crates will fully charge our focus, and we get a 100% damage bonus for grenades and mines. We have some investment in focus regeneration that I'll talk about later, so this pretty much turns our mines into a free skill with almost no cooldown and adds 100% damage. It's kind of insane. You might ask the question, mines or grenades? To which the answer is definitely mines. Grenades have a lot less damage, a much higher cooldown, and actually takes longer to throw the grenade and land on the ground. So it's pretty obvious that mines are definitely the right choice here. These landmines work a little differently than the ones that you get in the story missions. You have to use the skill once to lay down three mines, and then you recast it up to three times to explode each mine one by one. This does sound clunky, but in practice it does feel pretty smooth, especially when you get some cooldown reduction. The recast is on less than a 0.5 second cooldown, so you are able to just hold down the button to do 3 explosions in a quick succession. You can even move around while you're holding that button down. As you can see from the damage numbers, this skill is absolutely overtuned and just insane. I really expect to see this get nerfed next season. 
Another thing that makes these mines really strong is the fact that they don't eat up enraged tokens since it's technically not an attack. This lets us constantly sit on our cap of 29 and enjoy the base damage boost of 232%, but that number gets way higher with some of the other gear choices that we make. My armor slot has a normal relic assault armor with the enchantment plus focused based on enemy type on kill, which has been necessary to keep the focus that we're spending on spamming landmines and assault jump. You won't really notice the focus gained on regular enemy kills, but you'll definitely notice it from champion kills. About 5 champions is enough to fully restore your focus, so make sure you are not skipping the champions along the way. The assault jump skill itself is really good because most of Crusader's weapons, including the Grav Gun, lack a mobility skill. The Neural Implant is another normal relic with the enchant plus 1 enraged token on critical hit. This is all we need to stay capped on enraged tokens most of the time, because the main skill, Gravity Implosion, only uses one token per attack and leaves this persistent DOT that hits many times a second, so any critical hits from that will stack tokens without even spending any. Also, Remote Mine itself does not eat enraged tokens since it's technically not an attack, but it still benefits from the damage bonuses. It even generates tokens when it crits, thanks to this Neural Implant. We get even more damage from enraged tokens with our Eye Implant, another normal relic with the enchantment 6% damage bonus per enraged token, that leaves us with a total of 174% at our current cap of 29. Usually the D enraged token cap is 20, but we have the main implant of Wrath that increases the cap up to 10, in my case 9. This is one of the most powerful and sought after ancient relics in the game. If you don't have one of these, you can settle for another normal relic with 6% damage bonus per enraged token once again. The Purity Seal has pure defensive enchantments. It's an Archaeotech relic with 46% suppression damage reduction when an energy shield is active. We always have a active shield with a shield leech doctrine, so this effect will pretty much make it so we're taking almost half suppression damage when we have a shield, which is all the time. If you can't get this, another good alternative is the normal relic, the percentage of damage taken to energy shield is gained as suppression, which is still good, but not nearly as good as this one. The actual belt item is a normal relic with 20% supreme damage reduction for 4 seconds on losing at least 7.7% HP on hit. This is a huge defensive boost that can easily bring us to the maximum 80% damage reduction, because losing at least 7% of your HP to one hit is extremely common, especially in high level missions, and we have the sustain to just get our health back up. The Inoculator is another normal relic with 47% to Inoculator duration with an energy shield active. The two red modules are Coagulant and Absorbent for simple healing and suppression regen, and then the two yellows are both Frenzon that give a ton of crit chance and crit strength for 5 seconds, more like 7.5 seconds with that enchant, and the highest I've seen my crit chance with this on is 76%, and then a crit strength of 123 meaning critical hits will deal a minimum of 300% more damage and then have a high chance of rolling for 50% increased damage. This lets Remote Mind's base damage crit for absolutely ridiculous numbers. The first Signum is a normal relic with 12% damage bonus per enraged token, attacks remove one additional token, which leaves us with another gigantic damage boost of 348%, losing an additional token per attack makes using any skill that's not gravity implosion really dangerous, so be careful unless you know that you can quickly restack tokens from a big pack coming up. The other Signum is just a copy and paste of my first one, or as close as you can get to it. This adds a bunch more damage so I can just laugh at how absurdly high Remote Mine can hit enemies. We now lose 3 tokens per attack though, which makes using anything but Gravity Implosion even more dangerous, but that is a price I'm willing to pay. Cooldown Reduction as a primary enchantment makes this build feel a lot smoother. Crit chance is important, and then damage bonus for AoE skills is one of the biggest boosters that we can get on a Signum. The secondary enchantments both have damage to knockback skills because Remote Mine is a knockback skill. The most important passive tree is definitely area effects, because almost every little point here scales both of our ways of dealing damage and the center eradicative protocols lets us use gravity implosion much more often. This point takes 2% of the remaining cooldown off of AoE skills per enemy hit, 4% per enemy killed. Because Gravity Implosion is a persistent effect that damages rapidly over 5 seconds, 
That 2% cooldown reduction per hit is activated many times as long as you aim it at a large pack of enemies. This lets you basically ignore the cooldown sometimes and have multiple implosions out. Next is the movement tree. It's a pretty simple one. The left side gives us the speed to get around the map faster and the right side gives a ton of cooldown reduction to spam our skills more often to make the build feel a lot better. I get all but 2 points in the critical hits tree because critical hits are so important for this build. They generate enraged tokens and they just deal a ton of damage. All of these points are really really good. Then I rush to the final point of physical attacks tree to get the concussive trauma that applies a debuff that makes the enemy take up to 50% more damage. All of the points along the way are pretty good for scaling damage, especially impact necrosis that applies a physical vulnerability on critical hits, and because we critically hit so often, we're very quickly able to get 10 stacks on an enemy. I take most of the points in the defense tree on almost every build I make. I like to be tanky enough to tackle high difficulty missions, so the resist given from the small points are all amazing, and the final point can stop us from being one shot every 10 seconds, which makes hardcore Void Crusades a lot less stressful. I have 3 points on the left side of the support tree to get some extra focus regeneration since that is our main resource, and then 4 points on the right gives a total 8% cooldown reduction for skills using focus, which makes remote mine and assault jump a lot better. I put my last few points in the health tree just to get the 5 flat health points, which is a really good defensive layer since it also scales our maximum shield by 200% of our maximum HP. The first and most important perk is Armory of Zeal, that I already talked about in the first part of this video, but to reiterate, this makes our remote mind cost focus instead of charges and deal 100% more damage. Then I have artificial organs for that 1% maximum focus regenerated per second. The HP regen is also nice sometimes. Losing 20% inoculator effectiveness is a shame, but that is a downside that I'm willing to deal with to sustain the focus that I need to use my abilities. Self mortification gives a pretty big damage bonus based on your missing focus up to 75%. We're able to sustain focus from the armor relic plus focus on enemy kill when we're clearing, but in big boss fights with not a lot of minions, especially not champions, you'll find yourself sitting at low focus often, so this perk can give us a big single target damage boost versus those fights that we'd normally really struggle with. For attributes, you want to rush Virtue to 15 for that plus 1 focus regeneration milestone that is pretty much necessary to sustain our main resource. Then put your remaining points into Warfare to scale your base damage and benefit from all of the really powerful milestones. If you can get to 25 to unlock Beast Lore, deal 50% bonus damage against elites and bosses, you'll be a single target powerhouse, but you'll need at least two items with plus four warfare enchantments on them to do that. In the weapon sockets, I have the 125% physical damage bonus for Peace Doctrine. This scales both the Grav Gun and the Remote Mines at the same time. The other two slots have Sicarian Shards for crit chance, since we rely so heavily on crits for damage and enraged token generation. Both my inoculator and main implant have the weaker 3-piece version of that doctrine that gives a 70% physical damage bonus. This build's goal is to get as high a physical damage bonus as possible, because remote mines base damage numbers are just insane, we want to scale them to be even more insane. I could have put another 125% physical damage doctrine in my armor, but I desperately needed sustain. So I instead opted for the new 5-piece doctrine, 12% of damage dealt is leached as HP and the shield. Since we deal such ridiculous amounts of damage, even in minus 90% plus missions, this leech quickly brings us back to max health and max shields. It also activates my inoculator and purity seal enchantments that rely on having an active energy shield. This final slot has a resistor shard for some extra damage reduction which lets us live through some more things. And the final two sockets in my belt are filled with an Uncreator Psalm for a massive increase to vulnerabilities, an Ordinatus Psalm that can reduce the armor of enemies with rapid hits from Gravity Implosion. And that's it for my Grav Guns and Mines Crusader build. This is probably one of the most creative and fun builds that I've ever made, and it is super powerful as you can see from some of the footage, especially when it comes to single target. It's also very beginner friendly, since you don't even need a good weapon. All you really need is a remote mine and an enraged token generator. The rest of your gear could be like blue mastercrafted pieces and you wouldn't really even notice. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. And let me thank my members for supporting the channel because I really, really appreciate them. Mr. Fatcat, 
Thod Diver, Gunner Granzin, and Man Behind the PC.